We finally made it, Yakuza 8 has come out. Yeah! Which is perfect because I have played the previous games in the last recent months. So everything about the series is fresh in my mind. And to top it all off, I invested over 100 hours into this game. So how would we rank Yakuza 8 Infinite Wealth compared to the other Yakuza games? Well, first off, we are going to have to deduct two points for adding a stupid fucking paywall on the new game plus. You stupid bastards. This could have been an easy 10 out of 10. Now, they have to have improved on the one thing we all play Yakuza for, right? And it's not the gameplay. It's not the story. No, it's the fucking karaoke, baby. Yeah, give him that point back. Yakuza 8 feels very refreshing. With its new location, Hawaii, which just has an atmosphere that just puts your mind at ease. It makes the game more interesting because you are placed in a completely unknown area. As you progress through the story, you will slowly discover more of Hawaii, which adds more incentive to continuing the story. I have never thought a game would have me friending a dog on social media, fighting an enemy named Misdemeanor Wiener, using a segue to travel around, and even having a texting minigame that is surprisingly addictive. <laughs> oh, come on, this is the one. This is the, this is my true love. The whole one I met my whole life. My love of my life. Oh no. Who the hell are you supposed to Never be? mind. We're gonna be dying alone. This leads to my next topic, the minigames. The great thing about Yakuza 8 is it turns the most normal task into a fun minigame. Like the photography minigame. Like I don't have any fucking idea what I'm doing, but I'm damn sure I'm having fun. They just included so many minigames that will keep surprising you and make you want to play more. They even have some that remind me of other games which kept me invested while playing them all. But the best one is Crazy Delivery, which reminds me of the best game I played in my lifetime, Crazy Taxi. You should try it out. It's a classic. Having multiple mini games that match the vibe of Hawaii just makes the game feel so refreshing. Also, when you return to Yokohama later in the game, it feels so nostalgic, especially the side content that heavily references the older Yakuza games. The game also has a splash of creativity around every corner, whether it be with the Bond Bingo card or the improved version of combat where you can angle the enemy to crash into one another. You will always feel a jolt of nostalgia every time they mention <laughs> something that was in the previous Yakuza games, which adds a new reason to re-explore in Jincho and Kamurocho. The setting having an influence on the side content in the minigames makes the game feel more alive and results in me putting a lot of hours into exploring. I like to mention the cast of the party members is absolutely insane. I have never had a party in a JRPG be this interesting. We have characters from the old original Yakuza games and returning members from Yakuza 7. They even have new ones that just have attributes that make you want to learn more about them. I've noticed some reviewers believe that Yakuza 8 sub-stories are over the top, which I can't understand, especially if you played the previous Yakuza games. So you're telling me the man babies in Yakuza Kawaii 2 are over the top, huh? Or when Majima joins a cult in Yakuza 0? That, that, that is it over the top? See, I believe there isn't it over the top when it comes to sub-stories in Yakuza. From playing the previous games, when I go into a sub-story, I put it in either two categories, emotional or funny. So with these categories, there is no limit to what a substory can do. So yeah, there is no over the top in a fucking Yakuza game. This wouldn't be an honest review if we didn't discuss the boneheaded decision to add all this extra pay BS. First, obviously the paywall for New Game Plus should result in Sega to be sent to the Scammer Dungeon for a week. Bare minimum. Now I want to compare the Standard Edition to the Deluxe Edition. In the Deluxe Edition, you get these Sujima that are pretty broken. Now basically, what's Sujima is it's basically Pokemon and the ones you get compared to the ones that you find in the world it's not even close the ones that you get Fast from the DLC fuck, are boy. broken this DLC one compared to my base level one is ah, not even ah. close another thing they give you is a large supply of XP boosters and Sujima gifts Sujima gifts are things you use to capture the Sujima in the game which are basically Pokeballs now the ones you get compared to the ones you find in the world drastically increase the chances of capturing one it's like having a master ball in Pokemon so imagine all your pokeballs are master balls. 
With the inclusion of all the XP boosters you get from the Deluxe Edition, you don't have to do much training with your Sujimon. Now, if you're fine with this, that's cool. Now, it does raise concern that they are putting a price tag on the progression system in the game. The story isn't as ambitious as Yakuza 7 story, but it does heavily utilize the setting of Hawaii and Yokohama to tell a more compassionate and intriguing story. The story follows the end of an era and the beginning of a new one, talking about the battle with time and re reflecting on past regrets while trying to finally turn a new leaf. Yeah, the story is definitely an emotional roller coaster. Question about it, I am ready to get hurt again. It takes more time to focus on the connections you build up on the journey rather than the main objective. The main antagonists and villains aren't as strong as the previous ones, but the journey that the characters go on make everything feel worthwhile. These characters are all broken misfits placed together in a party and have to learn how to adapt to one another as they come together to uncover the case. Each new character added to the story feels unique and isn't one dimensional. Don't believe me eh? Let's talk about Tamizawa. Minor spoiler warning. He seems like a sleazy crook but in actuality he's a broken man who's trying to turn a new leaf finally. He was always coasting and following the boss's orders, the man who he can never repay. He tries everything to escape his past and never accepts it. But once he meets Kazuga, he feels that if someone like Ichiban could bond with him, then he deserves a second chance. Now my one issue with the story is the pacing. The first two chapters of the game are more introduction and tutorial based, so you're not gonna enter Hawaii until chapter 3, which is around 6 hours. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> <laughs> now this isn't a major drawback because once you're in the chapter 3, I felt like a starving man finally reaching a buffet. But throughout the entire game, they included too many flashbacks. For Christ's sake, they have a time skip and then right after they have a one month later. Sometimes having less explanation allows the player to digest the story better and allows scenes to have more of an impact and doesn't make the game feel like a dialogue mess. The bond we create with most of the characters in the previous game allows the journey to have more of a spark. The game also has parts where it separates the cast of characters, allowing different characters to finally connect. This heavily reminds me of Yakuza 0 when you play as Goro Majima and Kazuma Kiru. Experiencing the story from two sides allowing characters to grow from different conflicts feels like a great way to tell a story like this especially when you have two living legends in the mist and you're definitely gonna feel connected with Kazuma Kiru because he has been there on our side since day one and hearing his perspective on the past and the future just brings a tear to my eye. In all honesty, I would be lying that I didn't love playing this game and invested all my time into it. The game is probably one of the best Yakuza games out there. I truly cannot stop playing it and I believe it provides so much that makes you feel like it deserves to be the sequel to one of the best turn-based games I have played. However, Sega being stupid, having the paywall on New Game Plus and kind of price tagging the progression system with the deluxe edition, conflict in my decision. I'm gonna give him a 9 out of 10 and I'm also going to add a proceed with a caution sign. Basically watch out for microtransactions. Finally, man fuck Sega but man I fucking love Yakuza 8 Infinite Wealth.